This is a short AB lecture on section 2.2 .2, derivatives, in particular the power rule. The power rule we talked briefly on Tuesday. Here's the idea. If you have a function where you have a variable to a power, usually we'll use n, and you're looking for the derivative of it, you simply bring the power down, subtract 1 from the exponent, so this becomes n minus 1. A specific example, if we had f of x is x cubed, then the derivative of that would be 3x squared. Okay, so the exponent comes down, that's the 3, we subtract 1 from 3 and we get 2. Uh, notice that if we have a point on the curve, like 2, 8, this is a point on that curve, and we need the slope at 2, we can now use this as a shortcut, 3 times 2 squared, 3 times 4, which is 12. We don't need to do the limit. If the directions say use the limit, then you have to use the limit. But if the directions don't say that, you can use this shortcut, and we can get to the rate of change very quickly. Okay, now, uh, that's the general idea. Uh, when you look in the book, they have some strange notation that we should probably talk about. So when we have y is f of x, and this is our original function, and if you want, you can think of a, an example y is x cubed. And we're looking for the derivative function function that gives the rate of change of this one. Okay, so we use this notation y prime or f prime of x. Uh, and for this particular function, again, using the power rule, that works out to be 3x squared. However, there is an alternate notation that can be used and is used in your book. This derivative, in addition to calling it y prime or f prime, we see this notation sometimes, dy dx dy dx. Or you can see this, where you have the derivative with respect to x, with respect to x. So it's like d dx. This is like an operator. And then you put the y here. Or you could do this, the derivative with respect to x of, um, say, f of x. That's also correct. This d dx, this bit says take the derivative. The d is the derivative. And this is with respect to x. So all these mean the same thing. Certainly, this is a lot cleaner over here. But you can do this for all of them. Okay, now, what's the benefit of doing that? Uh, let's look at these two equations. I have two equations. I have the y is equal to x cubed, and y prime is 3x squared. That's using the power rule. I can write one equation that does the same thing. I can say the derivative with respect to x of x cubed is 3x squared. So this one statement sort of combines these two. It says, OK, the function is x cubed, and the derivative, the derived function, is 3x squared. So when you look in the book, when you look in you know, section 2.2, uh, .2, you see things like this. The derivative with respect to x of a constant is 0. Well, that sort of makes sense. You know, here's your. Here's your function y equals 3, and the slope is equal to 0. That's what this says. Uh, how about something like this? The derivative with respect to x of x. Well, that's just the line y equals x. That's our identity function, right, the 45-degree line. And if I said, what's the slope of that? You'd say, oh, that's 1. Okay. Or even more general, let's just go to a line. I don't even know if this one's in the book, but I'll write it down. What's the derivative with respect to x? of mx plus b. So this is your good old slope-intercept form from algebra 1. What's the rate of change? And the answer is m. Right? It's the slope of the line. It always stays m. Now, for the power rule, you see this. The derivative with respect to x of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. So there's your power rule in one succinct equation you don't need to have two different equations. So here's two equations. And now we can do this exactly the same thing, right? The derivative with respect to x of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. So one equation instead of two. OK? Um, section 2.2. 2. 
let's see what other goodies are in here. They do have what happens if you have a sum or a difference. So uh, on page 111, you see the derivative with respect to x of f plus g. Okay, so this would be the derivative of a sum, and that would be the sum of the derivatives. So that's the derivative of f, right, plus the derivative of g. It's not multiplication. You are not distributing that derivative operator. But it doesn't hurt to sort of think about that. It says take this derivative of that and then take the derivative of this. Again, not, there's no multiplication here. It's the derivative of. Okay, so the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So if I had y is equal to x to the fifth plus x cubed plus x plus 3 plus, plus x to the plus Joe plus x to the negative 2 plus x to the negative 10. Now a bunch of things added together. And I wanted the derivative, y prime, use the power rule and just repeatedly use it. 5x to the fourth, remember, subtract 1. 3x squared, subtract 1. This is our identity function. So that derivative is 1. This is a constant, so that derivative is 0. I guess we don't have to write plus 0, so I'll take that away. This one, we're going to bring the power down, negative 2, and then we have to subtract 1. Well, hopefully negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. We bring the power down, and we subtract 1, which is negative 11. And so there's the power rule uh, using uh, a bunch of terms added together. This um, derivative of a sum also works if that's a negative. Okay, the derivative of a difference is sort of the same deal. Uh, so let's do one of those. Suppose we had y is um, x to the fifth plus the square root of x uh, plus 8 plus x to the 5 thirds minus x to the 2 thirds. Okay, and our task is to find the derivative, and I'll use the dy dx here. I could use that y prime, that's okay. It wouldn't make any sense to use f in here because I don't see any f in the problem. So dy dx or y prime. Okay, power rule, 5x to the fourth. Now for this one, we really should think, hmm, square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. So when we use our power rule, that would be 1 half x to the, now we've got to subtract 1 from the half, so that would be minus 1 half. And there's our constant 8. We don't need to deal with that. The derivative of a constant is 0. How about this one? This is 5 thirds x. Now we've got to subtract 1 from 5 thirds, so that's 2 thirds. Okay. 5 thirds take away 3 thirds is 2 thirds. And this last one, we have the minus. We have a 2 thirds. We'll bring that down. And then we have to subtract 1 from 2 thirds, which is negative 1 third. Okay. And there would be the derivative. Okay, uh, one more example. Let's see. Um, the constant multiple rule, this is on page 110. So this says if you have the derivative of a constant times a function, you are allowed to effectively move this constant out in front. So it's the constant times the derivative of the function. Now, a lot of times you'll do this uh, in your head. You don't have to physically rewrite it. Here's an example. Um, y is equal to 10x to the fifth, and we're looking for y prime. Okay? So what I'm going to do is think, well, I, I need the derivative of 10x to the fifth. That's the task. And here's this constant, right? So this 10 is a constant multiplier. There it is. Um, and this rule up here, rule above, says if you have a C here, you're allowed to move it out front. So I can effectively take this 10 and put it there. Okay? So now I have 10 times the derivative of x to the fifth. Well, that would be 5x to the fourth. 
So I just get 50 x to the fourth. Now in practice, you know, here's your same problem, 10 x to the fifth. To write the derivative, you take the exponent and multiply it times the 10 and then subtract one. Okay, so you can do that very quickly and easily uh, without doing a lot, a lot of rigmarole. Okay. Um, so let's look at uh, an example from the problem set. So okay, so look at problem 33. This is on page 115. 115, number 33. And you should spend some time just working these odd problems. They go very quickly. But check the answers in the back. You should probably have an index card in the back so that you can get to there quickly. 33 says f of x is negative one half, negative one half plus seven fifths x cubed. Okay. And you're supposed to find the slope of the graph at the given point. And the point is zero. This is our point on the curve, negative one half. So you can think of this as C and F. So what we want is we want the derivative at C, or the derivative for this problem at zero. And I really don't want to do a limit. Limits can be a pain. So let's not do a limit. Instead, let's just simply write down the derivative at any point using our shortcuts, and then we'll go ahead and plug in the number zero. That's the idea. Okay, so, well, the derivative of a constant is zero. We don't have to worry about that. And for this one, we're going to use our power rule. We have 7 fifths. We multiply that times 3, and then we subtract 1, so we're at 2. So our derivative at any point, so f prime at x now, is going to be uh, 21 fifths times x squared. And if we want the derivative at 0, it's just going to be 21 fifths times 0 squared, which is 0. Now that was sort of a boring point. Um, let's pick a more interesting point. Suppose we had the point 1 something. Okay, so now the, the point on the curve is going to be 1. Let's see, if we put 1 in there, that becomes 1, and we'd get negative 1 half plus 7 fifths. So what's that? 2 tenths is 1 fifth. Right? I think I did that arithmetic right. Let's see, so this is uh, 14 tenths take away uh, 5 tenths, negative 1 half. So that's 14 take away is 9 tenths. I don't know how I got 1 fifth. Okay, 9 tenths. That's our functional value. Okay. Now we put one in, yeah, 7 fifths, which is 14 tenths take away 5 tenths, 9 tenths. Good. Okay, so let's find the slope at that point. Well, again, we do the exact same thing. We find the derivative at any point using our power rule shortcut. So f prime of x, uh, remember the constant goes away, and we get 21 fifths x squared. So now if we want the derivative at 1, we just plug 1 in, 21 fifths, right, times 1 squared, which is still 21 fifths. Okay. Um, just as an extension on here, let's go ahead and write the equation of the tangent line. Tangent lines are sort of the big deal in calculus. Uh, the nice thing here is we've done all the work. We just plug the numbers in. Here's the equation of our tangent line. And we know the point, so the 1 is going to go there for x sub 1, the 9 tenths is going to go here for the y sub 1, and we calculated the slope over here, and that's the slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative, and that goes there. So once we've done all the work, we can just write the answer down, y minus 9 tenths equals 21 fifths times x minus 1. Done. That's the equation of the tangent line to this curve. This is a weird curve here at this point. So at that point, we have the equation of the tangent line. Okay. So hopefully you can watch this. Even watch it more than once if you have to. Uh, read the directions to the problem in the exercise set. 
and then um, we'll talk about this on Friday. That would be tomorrow. Thank you very much.